Okay, so this is the rules of indices, section two. And there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. The first one is this rule, which is a to the power of m in brackets multiplied to the power of n. Now that's exactly the same according to the laws as say a m times n. And the way that works is, is that if I've got uh, a number in here, so it's A is for any number, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the number, let's say, uh, 2. And I'm going to say it's 2 to the power of 4. And then I'm going to put that in brackets, and I'm going to raise that again to the power of 2. So I've got 2 to the power of 4. Uh, multiplied or multiplied by the power of 2. So actually, if I deal with the brackets first, what I've got with that is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and that's encased in brackets. And then I've got that squared. So if you like, I can rewrite that as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is to the power of 4, and then I'm going to multiply it again, by a further 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So if you like, I've, I can write it out longhand, and it's going to end up with 2 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 2 to the power of 8. And that proves this law, that if I have a power that's raised in brackets, and then I've got it to a further power, I multiply those two together. So the law is A to the power of M times N. Now you can write it out longhand if you want to, but by this time it's probably going to get a little bit uh, long-winded to be writing everything out. So if you take notice of that law and try to remember that law when you're working through your GCSE exam questions. Now that's a practical example. Let's say, let's choose, choose another one. And I'm going to choose something slightly different here. And I'm going to use the practical GCSE exam question. And this is round about level B, level A, something like that. And the exam question is 2 to the power of 30 divided by 8 to the power of 9 equals 2 to the power of which number? And what they want you to do is to find the value of x. So find x. Well, the easiest way of working this out is to make sure that your integers are exactly the same. So that 2 to the power of 30 will stay the same. And there it is, 2 to the power of 30. And I'm going to divide it now by changing this number to a, root, a power of 2. So 8 is 2 to the power of 3, because 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 again is 8. So to convert 8 to a power of 2, it's 2 to the power of 3. And that's all to the power of 9, equals 2 to the power of x. Well, using the law of indices, I've got a, m times n, which is this term here. So I've still got 2 to the power of 30 divided by 2 and then 3 times 9. So it's 2, 3 times 9 is 27. And if you look at one of the other uh, videos that we've done before on the earlier power of indices, if you've got a division of indices, 2 to the power of 30 divided by 2 to the power of 27 is 30 take away 27, so, which is 3, so 2 to the power of 3 is your answer. So what we've done there is this is a, a GCSE A type grade question, so it's quite a high grade question. It's probably worth three or four marks. And the thing to remember is to make sure that the integers are converted to the same level and then use the laws to be able to work out, in this particular case, the value of x. There is one other thing to remember, which comes across a lot in a couple of GCSE questions, and that is if you raise an integer to the power of 0, then it equals 1. Now, the way that works is, is again, using the division uh, signs, I'm just going to show that. So, let's take an example where we've got 2 to the power of uh, 4 
divided by 2 to the power of 4, which is exactly the same as 1. It's there. Okay? So 2 to the power of 4 divided by 2 to the power of 4. If we use the integer laws, that would be 2 to the power of 4 minus 4. So 4 minus 4 equals 2 to the power of 0, which is equal to, equal to, and equal to 1. So, if you come across an exam question where it says 327 to the power of 0, it means 1. Okay? And it's very important. It's one of the things that some people uh, do miss a little bit out, but if you use the laws, you'll be able to work out that it equals 1 in all cases. Okay, so what we've done then, we've looked at a, a law, uh, we've applied that law, and we've looked at why it came about, and then we've looked at an A-grade, in this particular case, an A-grade exam question, um, and also we've looked at a special case scenario, so there's two questions there, and again, that's probably an A, maybe a B type question, and that's probably worth um, one mark to you, but it's just something to remember for when you're taking your exams.